Hey, everybody, welcome to Tony Katz tonight. Great to be with all of you. By the way, I, I dig this shirt because it's got the, the crazy thing, and I'm a, a, I'm a fan of it. Uh, it's a, so it's, the, it's not what I thought it was tonight. I thought we were three hours tonight. We're not. But. The other two hours, a very, very cool thing going on WIBC. This is going to be incredible. I'm glad you guys are here. It's a great show. Ashley's in. A um, lot to get to. A lot to get to. And then next week. Ho, ho, ho. Next week, it all comes together. Enjoy the show, guys. Visit Indiana.com. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Katz tonight. You are go. We have a lot to get to tonight, especially being D-Day. But I have to do a wrap-up from the week on Bergdahl because I spoke a few months ago about the concept of contempt. That what you see from the administration, what you see from the progressive ideologues in America is contempt. Contempt not only for what you believe being different than what they believe, but contempt for your existence. And it, it goes on two levels. When, for example, we were discussing Benghazi, when Brett Baer had Tommy Veter on the show there over there at Fox News, and Tommy Veter, part of the Obama administration, or at least he was, I think he was an NSA spokesman, was asked about specifics about uh, memos written uh, regarding the video and, and what happened. Use the expression, dude, that happened like two years ago. It's contempt. When you have people asking questions about Benghazi and you heard things like, what difference at this point does it make? That is contempt. And it happens on two levels. It happens, first of all, that they despise the fact that you disagree with them, that you're willingly open to, open to challenging them. But it also exists because by asking the question, by wanting to know information, you're saying that you want a better standard to which this administration has not lived up to. They are incensed by that. They are disgusted by that. I now bring you forth to the Bo Bergdahl conversation. And I will, again, there's got to be a court-martial to understand about whether or not he deserted. There must be a court-martial. That's what has to happen. There has to be an investigation to see if a court-martial is warranted. And then, under the, the, the UCMJ, the Uniform Code of Military Justice, there has to be a court-martial. I am not interested in, in second-guessing those two steps. And as many SEALs have told us and, and other members of the military have told us and in news reports and elsewhere, that is where his guilt or innocence will be dealt with. But the court of public opinion, you're allowed to say, you're allowed to have any opinion you want. Clearly, the evidence shows or pushes in a direction, I should say, of desertion. Does it push in the direction of defection? Does it push in the, as James Rosen has, has now reported, that uh, Bergdahl, really felt himself part of the group, converted, uh, was, was carrying weapons at times, at times also tried to escape. There's a lot to the story. But that's the part two of the story. At least the court-martial has to happen on what we know as this desertion. But the real reason I bring up the, the contempt is how now we're seeing the Bergdahl situation be played out. The absolute truth is that President Obama failed, and miserably so, in this deal. Make no mistake about it. He underestimated the worth of the deal. Americans, it turns out, does not believe in a, they, we don't believe in a five-for-one trade. They don't believe in it uh, on the right or on the left. They don't believe in it black or white. They don't believe in it Jew or Christian. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in a five-to-one trade. They really thought the Obama administration was convinced there would be total euphoria across the land. The Rose Garden presentation 
to total miss. It was seen as self-serving, which it was, and wholly inappropriate, which it was, because this deal was not about Bo Bergdahl as much as it was about President Obama politically having the VA scandal really being a scandal. Veterans dying. I mean, this is, this is no joke stuff. And he was looking for a win with veterans, didn't get it, miscalculated. I think that comes from not uh, being a, a military man, actually being opposed to uh, the military for so much of, of his life, and being surrounded by people who actually hate and despise the military. How are you supposed to have the right feeling for how you're supposed to handle these situations? But none of that has stopped the president from doubling down. He said he'd do it again in that uh, press conference he had with David Cameron yesterday. <coughs> so much so that he said that it's Washington whipping up uh, th this story, even though there are members of Bergdahl's platoon and others who say he deserted. He's basically calling those people wackos. He's calling those people crazy. One of the things that you're hearing is this concept of dysfunction. Susan Rice lied again, calling Bo Bergdahl a man who served with honor and distinction. She doubled down on that. The only thing we know for sure is no, he didn't. We can clearly say he did not serve with honor and distinction. And let's say you say to me, well, Tony, let the court-martial decide that. Fine. Then until the court-martial decides that, you don't say that the man served with honor and distinction when you have this mountain of evidence that you now want to see a court-martial figure out. And we know, speaking of lies, Susan Rice, of course, being the chief liar uh, in the Obama administration, we were told that we had to do this deal, and the reason that Congress could not be consulted was that Bergdahl's health was at risk. But it turns out, by and large, he's fine. Harry Reid gives a prime example of this contempt when he actually uses the line about why he got notified but the rest of Congress didn't get notified, what difference does it make? It, almost word for word, the Hillary Clinton on Benghazi. What difference does it make? That is not the words of a serious human being who actually values life and actually wants there to be a system by which we, 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 we govern ourselves. He is in favor of lawlessness, and when the lawlessness takes place, he says, what difference does it make? It's contempt for you daring to question him and for you actually wanting a better standard to exist. I bring you this, this basis because I can't find right now and, and, and I, I think I'm onto it with this contempt. I, I think it does fit in, in many, many ways. But the, the level of building anger and disgust that is coming out in this case, not from those who are saying, oh, he's a traitor, oh, he's a defector, oh, he's a deserter. Uh, I say to those people, let 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 us have the court martial but it's from those people who are unbelievably um what's the word i'm looking for what are they how um the ones who refer to our troops as psychopaths the ones who tr refer to our troops as dysfunctional all in an effort to support and protect the president they're starting to put out a meme they want to put out the idea that the troops are so out of control, how do you expect anybody to stay? And then they couch it on the other side like they actually care about the man in uniform, which for many of them I question openly. No, no, no fear. Not, not an ounce of fear in me. I openly question, uh, uh, what is her name? It's Nancy Pelosi's daughter. What is her name? We were, we were discussing it on, on Twitter. She did not enjoy uh, my, my conversation. I don't know why. I was, a, I was a treat. Christine. Christine Pelosi. The, she's the, the director. Alexandra. 
I don't know. Was it Alexandra? Maybe it was Alexandra. No, I think it's Christine, but there is Christine? Alexandra. There is Alexandra. That's the director. And this one's Christine, according to what I have here on Twitchy. Many of us have questions about Bergdahl and his dysfunctional platoon as chronicled by Michael Hastings, awaiting Army investigation of all that. The article she's referring to is chronicled by, chronicled by Michael Hastings was in Rolling Stone magazine. But n you, do you want me to actually believe that she's concerned about the welfare of the troops? That she, she's concerned about whether or not we leave a man in uniform behind? I, I, re I reject it wholeheartedly. I openly say no, she doesn't. That this is a political maneuver to give cover to the president by trying to throw uh, doubt not on Bergdahl, but on those he served with. And she's not alone. Contempt is what they have for you, and I can prove it much more ahead. This is Tony Katz tonight. My name is Armando Montalongo from the hit TV Okay, we've got a four minute break here. I'm going to run to the restaurant. Enjoy back. that. So, if you've ever wanted to get involved in real estate investing, right. and while she's doing that, guys, I will talk to you. First of all, can I just say my hair is nuts today? I did fly back from Wisconsin today. I am every level of tired that you can imagine. So, here, here, is, here is a couple of things. Number one, I really did think tonight was a three-hour show. And then I got told they are running, and it's actually a good special. Sports Mike put it together. Uh, they're running a special um, commemorating uh, the anniversary of Ronald Reagan's death. It's a two-hour special. So they're running that at 10 Eastern. So we're only an hour. Let, let the sadness begin. But I will tell you this. Next week, you have Stacey Washington on Monday. You have Cam and Seton, Cameron and Seton on Tuesday. And you have Cam Edwards on Wednesday. You have me on Thursday. Do not miss it. Not for a second. Do not, do not, do not miss Thursday the 12th. I am going to discuss things so unbelievable that if it was if I did it on Friday the 13th, you'd think I was lying. Guys, do not miss it. Don't miss it. 6409 that's 317 and that's all I have to say about that keep that number handy for future storms Circle City Sound Indianapolis's premier men's chorus presents Doo Wop to Woodstock Saturday June 14th at 7 p.m. at the Palladium in Carmel for more information and to order tickets go to the Center for the Performing Arts .org or call the Palladium box office at 843-3800 don't miss this one day only performance by Circle City Sound Indianapolis's premier men's chorus as they present Doo Wop to Woodstock Saturday, June 14th, 7 p.m. at the Palladium. For more information and tickets, go to the Center for the Performing Arts.org or call the Palladium box office at 843-3800. Is this the year for that outdoor kitchen or maybe an in-ground pool? Or do you just need to take care of the driveway? Trust the pros at JS Concrete. They'll take the time to listen to what you want, whether it's a patio, a pergola, an in-ground pool, or driveway. They can offer creative suggestions if needed or just create your... Level? Titan? Let, let me let me let me say this. What I have to say blows a run for Senate out of the water. You 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 won't miss it. A minute thirty, Tony. Planting trees at local parks or serving the don't miss it. You won't believe it. A minute thirty, heard. PL's people are taking the time to make sure a growing city grows together. In fact, of all the power we provide... Now, Prairie, that, that would be fantastic. The most important. That would be a rather large move if I was purchasing the St. Louis Rams 
and returning Please them to Los Angeles. Please be trusted local independent American standard I am not. air conditioning dealer, B&W, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning. <laughs> Owner Beth Rovazzini says, beware of those $50 tune-ups. There's seminars I for the industry it. that suggest you offer those cheap prices, and basically your homeowner is paying to be a hot league for that company because they're coming Shocking out with the intent indeed. to find something wrong. B&W, plumbing, heating, and air conditioning, serving central Indiana for over 50 years. Can we reach I have to do a sun double swear? I don't even know what that is. B&W is your trusted local independent sun American double swear, that's all I know. 30 seconds. Heard. 3 WIBC. This Saturday, join our Home and Garden Show as they broadcast live at Sullivan's Hardware on 49th and Penn. Stop by, check out the store, and enjoy the live show from Pat and the gang from 9 to 1. Also, mark your calendars. The fourth annual Donato's Downtown Freedom Blast at the Indiana War Memorial on July 4th is approaching. Activities begin at 6 p.m. Lemon Wheel will be performing live on the Indianapolis Colt stage. Grab more info online at WIBC.com. You're listening to Tony Katz tonight. <laughs> to Stand by. Tony. Call yep. 239-9393. You are go. Tony Katz tonight. 317-239-9393. So in come the supporters of President Obama to the rescue. To call out the mental state of Bergdahl's platoon. You've been you've seen this meme grow. President Obama failed. He just failed, guys. There, there's, there's nothing else. And, and part of the problem is, is that uh, President Obama lives in an ideological world and not the real world. Whenever he engages the real world, it always fails. Whenever he engages the ideological world, it seems to work out for him. Got elected twice. Obama cares the law. Dodd-Frank. You, you got to admit that when he's all about his ideology, he's rather successful. Shamefully. Sickeningly. But he is successful. But when the real world comes a-calling, Foreign policy, the economy, total disaster. Total disaster. There's no spin here. There's no way to change that reality. I, I think that if you were to engage what I just said with people, they would tell you that's the most honest assessment of President Obama they have ever heard in their life. When it comes to his ideology, he is massively successful. Even though the ideology is not successful, he is successful in moving that ideology down the line. When reality comes a-calling, he is a bumbling, stumbling fool. He is Gerald Ford, but without the aw shucksness. There was an Obama staffer, Friedman, I believe his last name was, who started this ball rolling, referring to Brandon Friedman, a deputy assistant secretary of public affairs, Department of Housing and Urban Development. He himself, a military veteran who in a series of tweets referred to those who served with Bergdahl as psychopaths. Then there was this from Think Progress, a very, 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 I don't know how many varies I need there. Uh, very left-leaning uh, publication or website which put out the following in an article, did Sergeant Bergdahl desert the Army or did the Army desert him? They're pushing forth a narrative. You heard me talk about Pelosi's daughter talking about the dysfunctional platoon as chronicled by Michael Hastings. This is the article that was in Rolling Stone magazine. So you now see a trend of this happening, of this growing. It's the problem with the troops. It's the problem with the military. It's not a problem with Bergdahl. Oh, no, no, no problem with Bergdahl. And that's why President Obama did it. You know, he's the smartest man who ever lived, don't you know? The New York Times editorial attacked the Bergdahl unit for a lack of security and discipline. The great Melissa Clothier saying, this makes me so angry I could spit. She's absolutely right. That's how a lot of people feel. So we have the New York Times saying that the unit was lacking. We have Pelosi's daughter and an Obama staffer both referring to the troops as dysfunctional and psychopaths. We then have Think Progress asking the question, did Sergeant Bergdahl, he's Private Bergdahl as far as I know, 
did Sergeant Bergdahl desert the army or did the army desert him? That's a meme, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to know what that was. That is an orchestrated maneuver. But I didn't know about this today until I was on Cam and Company on NRA News this afternoon, as I normally am. And there was this article from David Brooks on the opinion pages of the New York Times with an article entitled, President Obama was right. He was right. Well, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's something big to say. So David Brooks decides he's going to take a pen to paper. Maybe he types, I don't know. And he writes an article that says the following. I'm quoting directly from it. It doesn't matter if Bergdahl deserted his post or not. It doesn't matter if he is a confused young man who said insulting and shameful things about his country and his army. The debt we owe to fellow Americans is not based on individual merit. It is based on citizenship and loyalty to the national community we share. Soldiers don't risk their lives only for those Americans who deserve it. They do it for the nation as a whole. Now, I have said clearly, and I said it from day one, Bergdahl being a deserter does not, does not mean anything to whether or not you make this trade to begin with. I had people disagree with me who, who very loudly disagreed with me. Uh, I, I think that they are wrong. Him being a deserter is the secondary question. It is what you do next to first asking whether or not you make this kind of trade, five for one, five, high-ranking Taliban terrorists. But when David Brooks wants to engage a conversation, the debt we owe to our fellow Americans is not based on individual merit. It is based on citizenship and loyalty to the national community we all share. Loyalty would involve not deserting. I mean, it would, right? What is the loyalty that Bergdahl showed to his unit when he left in the middle of the night? putting them in danger because now they had to go look for him. And why can't we relate that to the national scene? Does David Brooks feel this way about loyalty to the national community we all share when we have a porous border to the south? When we have a situation where people are coming through in Texas and they're being bused to Arizona and let off at bus stops in record numbers, Arizona can't keep up, being described as payback. Obama on Jan Brewer, the governor for her stances on immigration. Brooks continues, it is not dispositive either that the, release to, that the deal to release Bergdahl may put others at risk. The five prisoners released from Guantanamo Bay, Cuba, and a swap for Bergdahl seem like terrible men who could do harm, but their release may have been imminent anyway, and the loss of national fraternity that would have resulted if we start abandoning Americans in the field would be a greater and more long-lasting harm. I reject that anybody like David Brooks could even talk about long-lasting harm when we knew we had to provide extra security to Ambassador Chris Stevens and we didn't do it. That is number one. But here is number two. The five prisoners are terrorists and they seem like terrible men who could do harm? That is contempt, ladies and gentlemen. David Brooks thinks you are so incredibly dumb that you'll actually buy the idea that these terrorists aren't actually such bad guys. Who knows if they'll kill again? We don't know for sure. Maybe they'll do harm. Maybe they'll raise puppies and take up knitting. It is full-out contempt. And what David Brooks has shown is that all of these progressives think progress and the Pelosi daughter and, and Brandon Friedman, they are willing to sell out humanity for their ideology. As a matter of fact, their ideology trumps humanity. I'm not telling you how to vote. I'm just asking you not to be like them. This is Tony Katz tonight. Announcing the Mike's Car Wash Father's Day stock up with our lowest prices of the year. Uh, Tony, did you see the uh, message about Greg? Any washes yeah. buy four, get Do you want uh, me to tell him to keep holding? Yeah. You can afford to okay, and I also found the manual for courts martial updated in 2012 that de defines Article 85 desertion. 
and kind of talks about what the consequences of that are if he's found guilty. I have, the, I have that. I, okay. I, Boston yeah. Randy said There's that to me like hour one. A gift yeah, it's. I love military documents. Um, so yeah, you've got that. So you see all that 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 is. I'll uh, go ahead and tell Greg. Um, Hold on, yeah. About that, right. about you knowing he's there. Yep. Prices of the year as low as five dollars and thirty-three cents per wash. The question isn't whether to get a gift for someone; it's who you might be forgetting. Don't forget your dad. Stock up for anyone, even <laughs> dad, at any Mike's location. Sale ends Father's Day, right, Dad? Do we have any idea? Because I see what's up in the in the chat. And first of all, welcome to the chat room. Uh, you're using the number gave the five terrorists five million apiece to agree to go home and retire. There's a, a bigger story about the Haqqani Network that absolutely cash had to be part of this deal. There had to have been some cash. So do, is there a number out there uh, if, if cash was given as part of this swap and how much it was? Does anybody taking a guess to that? Is there any leak to that? I Between the travel today and just some general exhaustion, I haven't gotten to it. Um, but I want to know. My father brought that up to me today of all people. I shouldn't say of all people. He's pretty bright, but he hasn't been feeling well. He's sick. He's in a hospital right now. So hi, Dad. Feel better. I'm coming to visit in a couple of weeks. Visit a guy in a hospital? I visit old people in hospitals. That ain't going to work. So he And he was discussing it. How much did we give them? And I'm like, I have absolutely no clue, but I'd like to see if there's a number. Pocket closing cost programs and no payments until summer. We do all this and give you the flexibility to get cash out, shorten your term, or even pay off high interest what credit we'll cards. Do. Perfect credit or less than perfect credit. Call now 317-968-9500. That is what we'll do. See, today would have been the great day to be three hours actually. Additional terms and conditions. Because I could, uh, we. Be three hours than run two hours about Reagan. So. What was that? I said that I'd rather be three hours with you than run two hours of Reagan. Hey, uh, first of all, our, our dear friend Sports Mike put that together. So. Yeah, speaking of Sports Mike, I heard him talk that uh, he texted me to tell me that you were talking smack about me, or he was talking smack about me on the air the other day. I forgot about, oh, 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 hockey. Oh, it was funny. The funniest part of him talking smack about me in regards of hockey is that the team that played his team and won is in the finals, so my team still beat his team, so he doesn't have any room to talk. Well, he knows this, but he's, he's like, I live and die with one team, the Canadians, and 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 I actually, she likes like 12 different teams. It's, it doesn't even count. I have two teams, one in the east, one in the west, and then I have boyfriends. I spread the love, but I only have two teams. What do you mean you have boyfriends? What is that? What is that? You know, if there are players on the team that play really well, or you know they're cute, whatever. So I have lots of players that I enjoy Ashley. play. Usually one on every team. This is not. This is not. Uh, not normal, uh, Ashley. Right there. In the east, it's the Rangers, and in the west, it's the Hawks. So. By the way, where are we in the in the Stanley Cup? Is it still? Who, wasn't there a game tonight, or was it last night? There was a game one, and New York lost, and I'm yeah. mad. But they play again tomorrow night at 7:15 in Madison Square Garden. Oh, they do it. Do they switch every game? Yes. Which is really difficult for this series. Yeah, tell me about it. But I, I, I. For the game seven between LA and Chicago, Chicago pulled a 22.7. And that's what we were talking about because I said, "How happy is the NHL to have these two markets in the in the in the finals?" And he said they would have rathered Chicago. The 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 game seven was through the roof. Yeah, twenty two point seven is like a number ER pulled in like nineteen ninety six. Oh yeah, oh it's massive. But, it's uh, massive. It pulled a surprisingly low number, I guess, like a four nationwide average. So. We right. But they struggle with those weeknight games, too, especially if they're on the East Coast and they have to start a little bit earlier for TV time. Yeah. Yeah, but it's the Rangers, so so people don't care. They'll leave work. Like, the, I, I can guarantee you there are employers all over the New York metro area who are like, all right, you're out at four today? That's cool. There's, you can't argue with them. It's like guys who get there for hunting season, take off three days. You know what I mean? Bye. 
You are go. Good for you, Ashley. That's the Band of Brothers theme right there. Just a, one more follow-up, because when I prove something, I, I, I'm, I'm happy. To be able to prove that there are those out there, progressives, we, we call them, who will place their ideology over their humanity. I mean, it's, it's important to see it. You decide for yourselves. Uh, but there's a, a great article from our friend Virginia Cruda. Um, if you ever listen to Dana... To Dana Lash, uh, uh, you hear her every day at 3 o'clock here on WIBC. Uh, you, you may have heard it on my show as well. Uh, they own a bakery, the Crudas do, in, in Illinois in a place called Collinsville. But she is a 10-year veteran of the Army. Uh, and uh, she uh, served in Afghanistan and Belgium and, and in Guam. And she wrote a very interesting article over at The Blaze. And she reached out to me today to discuss the article a little bit. And one of the things that she was discussing, I want to make sure I say it right, because I thought it was interesting. It's the first time I've heard of it. was something called unlawful command influence. She writes here, it's, it's the bane of existence of anyone who seeks to enforce the Uniform Code of Military Justice. UCI to the layman is what happens when someone with a lot of rank of power, with a lot of rank or power, makes a comment or takes an action that interferes with the judicial process. And she gives two examples. The police acted stupidly, or if I had a son, he would look like Trayvon. The point that she is trying to make and, and I, I, I have not heard this before. She is the first person I have ever heard mention this. I look forward to digging in over the weekend and getting some more information about this idea, this concept of unlawful command influence. Is it possible by President Obama doubling down that he would do it again, calling Bergdahl a hero, Susan Rice going out there saying that he's a hero who served with honor and distinction? Are they somehow influencing what might happen in a court-martial. As she writes, if Bergdahl will be were to be tried for desertion or for aiding the enemy following statements such as those coming directly from the Obama administration to say the judicial process would likely be influenced would be an understatement. And then she, she has some other quotes and some other information she sent about people saying that this concept of un unlawful command influence is quite literally a bane of existence. It, 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 is, it is a cancer that, um, that can take place with, with, uh, within the military. I thought it was very, very interesting. You can catch it over at The Blaze. Virginia Cruda, K-R-U-T-A. She put that up yesterday. Um, I have not heard a single person mention it. Uh, I have known Virginia for a while and certainly know her to be a very, very, uh, she, she's, she's one upstanding person. Um, and, uh, I, I, so I don't believe she would ever write something that was salacious. I believe she knows what she's talking about. I just want to find out a little bit more about the concept, but it wouldn't, it wouldn't it fit in magnificently and that they're pushing forward the meme to therefore taint the concept, to taint the possibility of the court-martial? I mean, it fits everything else they do, trying to shape the, the public opinion by attacking those who may disagree. It's a very interesting concept. Uh, let me go to Greg there on line three. Greg, welcome to Tony Katz tonight. What's up, Greg? Greg? Yes. What's up, man? You know, I'm a former U.S. Army medic. Thank you for your I, service. Uh, thank you for the honor. I, you know, I've stood uh, three different court martials. And what's interesting is people don't understand what a court martial is. It's an investigation. Well, isn't uh, but, uh, now now if, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I, and and I'm okay with that. I, I never claim to be the military yeah. expert. But isn't there the investigation? Uh, I think Kurt Schlichter referred to it as like an Article Thirty Five. 
and Boston yeah. Randy, correct me if I'm wrong, and then there's the 85, which is the actual court martial itself. I have stood three different court martials of three different statures. I had a soldier die under my command as a medic, and as a medic, I'm the sole person responsible on a range. Right. As a, as a medic, I'm responsible for troops in the field, and as a medic, I'm responsible for all soldiers under my responsibility. So, you know, someone has a stroke in their barracks at 18 years old, well, uh, we need to investigate. I, I would say so, but your point is what? You're bringing this up for a reason. I am. Um, I hope and pray that the gutting of the military will not relinquish the investigation that needs to happen over this uh, soldier that was brought home. Uh, keep in mind, he's got five years of back pay sitting in his bank account. He's required to have direct deposit. Uh, I, I hope that the military will look at where that money is. Well, okay, so so there are a couple of things. Um, let's start with the second part first, because I've heard some people talk about the pay issue, and I appreciate the phone call, and I appreciate the service. Thank you, sir. Um there have been some who said that, no, 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 he hasn't actually been paid for the past years and that he is going to be due all of this money. So it's going to come to him in, for lack of a better word, a lump sum. What you're asking is if, if they've been paying direct deposit, where is that money? You're just asking, I'm assuming you're just asking, is it in, uh, so in, is it in his account or did it move? Was it utilized? I think a legitimate question, a good question, um, and does that happen within the, the court-martial? Well, one has got to assume. One has got to assume uh, that it will. Um, the other part of your question, I don't know if it was about, uh, it, oh, it was about what we're doing to our military. Um, one of the things that, you know, I mentioned Kurt Schlichter before, his new book, Conservative Insurgency, out July 15th. You can pre-order it, pre it at Amazon.com. Um, he, he, he's a, lo a longtime friend of mine and, and of the show. He has commented more than once that the military does need a, a swift kick in that there are some things that have been allowed to happen that should never be allowed to happen. And uh, even when we go just to the VA scandal in Shinseki, he thought that Shinseki should have been removed far quicker, at least if I'm, if I'm hearing him right. I don't want to put words into the man's mouth. Um, because you take responsibility. That's what you're trained to do. That's what you're supposed to do. You do not wait. You take the responsibility. Um, the gutting, as you're discussing it, of the military, it is, it is frightening that we think we should reduce the number of personnel. If we want to reduce certain types of armament, certain types of weapons, certain types of, of, of tanks or planes, I'm fine with that. We could probably reduce quite a few billion dollars. You never reduce people. In the end, you need the people. You never, ever reduce the, the people. Now, Ashley, you have an answer on the military pay? Yes, I do, Tony. Which is? Uh, this is according to the U.S. Army's official Army Benefits page. Uh, soldiers who are captured are placed into captive or prisoner of war status per the Geneva Convention. In particular, captive or POW status is designated to one who, while engaged in combat under orders of his or her government, is captured by the armed forces of the enemy. Soldiers are entitled to all pay and allowances that were authorized prior to the POW period. Soldiers who are in a POW status are authorized payment of 50% of the worldwide average per diem rate for each day held in captive status. The Secretary of Defense may authorize more than 50% of the worldwide average per diem rate requested by the Secretary of the Army. So if he were just a standard prisoner of war, you know, as we all believed coming into the situation, that would be his pay scenario. If he is the question to, is, did the money already get deposited into his account? What the site says is that um, uh, soldiers who are uh, interned, captured, beleaguered, or besieged, or detained in a foreign country against their will are entitled to receive or have credited to their account 
the pay and allowances to which entitled when the status begins. Okay, so so we did hear it right then that no, the money is not there. Because that would at least it was a good question, right? If the money was there, is all the money still there? Like that's a, that's a, I think a fantastic question. What you're telling me, Ashley, is that the money's not there yet. It it uh, looks like the the uh, money is not there. Payments okay. continue through death of receipt by the army of evidence of the through date of receipt by the army of evidence of the death of the member or date of presumption of death made by the secretary of the army or date of return to army jurisdiction. So we so, will. But we're yeah. about to see if someone. This conversation is going to be coming up very very quickly. Uh, a little bit on D Day. When we return, this is Tony Katz tonight. Hey, I'm a cheap replacement window, and the people in this house think they got a great deal. So then Bergdahl's trial would probably be a general court-martial, which is the most severe kind of court-martial under Article 85. Yes. I'll waste yes. a ton of their energy before they wise up. There was a, Plus, there was a, a specific term Schlichter used for close me. <laughs> the investigation, and, they, and I, they, it's, they just, a it's just eluded warranty. me. Uh, um, wait until they find out that the warranty on me keeps declining after two years, and it doesn't include labor. <laughs> the way I look at it, I'm one cheap replacement window. But Article 85, yes, is, 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 is court-martial. <laughs> oh, and how it's going to work. Man. I think the electric bill's due today. Yep. He's even running, and the bill's going to be huge. <laughs> this is not good. I hope they don't find out about Unique. Unique home pollution, one eight hundred eight. And then Article 10 of the UCMJ says that immediate steps should be taken to bring the accused to trial, although there is no upper time limit on detention before trial. Rule 707 of the Manual for Courts Martial prescribes a general maximum of 120 days for a speedy trial. Punishment other than arrest or confinement is prohibited before trial, and confinement should be no more rigorous than is required to ensure the accused presence at trial. So this will be a quick trial. Live out the message of the gospel. Not just on Sunday morning. Your so once the investigation's done, they're going to jump. <laughs> your right mouth, your mouth to God's detainment. ears. It's going to be a quick trial. And not no, just because child. these are the right things. To well, no, I mean, getting to it's going to be quick. No trial. Oh, no, 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 no. You don't have to wait as long as other people would because of how the UCMJ it's, is But again, it's not. It's, it, Find out how you can fit in it at tabtrails.org. No, I know. I'm not, I'm not saying it's going to be quick. I'm just saying they will get to it once they determine that they want to try him for this. Oh, okay, because uh, I don't know if they're ever going to get to that point moment. If they choose to try him for it, they'll move quickly to do so. And if they don't try him for it, um, they're going to look like complete and total morons, and no one will ever take the UCMJ seriously again. And that's the end of the military. When interest rates rise, prices will fall. It's the end of the UCMJ. It's, 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 no, no, no. it's the end. Of, it's, it's the end. That's why I invest in tax-free municipal it is, it, it is destructive. Income that's federally tax-free. At this point, that's exactly the kind of income I fear I need. pardon. I mean, I, I, I fear it. Bonds can serve as the cornerstone for a conservative. The key part of that is making sure that they get every eyewitness testimony, get every piece of evidence they can to make sure that they have a case for this and that they can prove that he did this before, you know, before they can start. So, absolutely free. And I can look and see if they've had other cases like this in the past to see if there's like a precedent. $10,000 to invest, consider municipal bonds. Take charge of your Because trials happen all the time. Military trials do people just money. don't hear about call now to receive your copy of our informative bond guide it's free so call right now 1-800-465-8465 if Bo Bergdahl gets a pardon 1-800-465-8465 I will cry is this the year for that outdoor kitchen or maybe an in-ground pool or do you just need to take care of the driveway trust the pros at JS Concrete They'll take the time to listen to what you want, whether it's a patio, a pergola, an in-ground pool, or driveway. I will be an they unstoppable machine. Needed or in just speaking out. Your I, 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 I will get, I will get fired. I will get fired. with the enemy that I just don't know how they wouldn't charge him. one one three zero one seven seven one one three zero one or jsconcrete.com. Obama will decide he suffered enough, and I uh, will pardon him. I, it, it's to death. It scares me. But I'm moving on, because we're only an hour. I'm sorry. You know what? It, 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 could be, it could be that I heard it wrong, I mean, with all the travel, but I thought I had it right. And you should, you should see me. I'm, I'm loaded for bear. I've got so many things to get into. Good guys. Full throttle 
40 seconds. I mean, I was going to spend two, two segments mocking LeBron. Standard heating and air conditioning dealer, B&W Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning. That will make you very popular with the city of Indianapolis. Well, I know what I'm doing. I have a trained professional there. Especially if you have an older unit. Our first is... You know what I'm saying, Fowler? ran and ran this winter. Yes, I do, Cats. Yes, I do. It only knows run time. Just call me Cats? That was a two-year winner. You just referred to me by my last name. Yeah, yeah, but when I do it, you know, it's cool. When you do it, it's just disrespect. Oh, okay, got to respect my elders. Coming back. Wow, dealer. it's probably old. This hour is powered by Boom. Whisper Hearing Boom. Center. Ghost of Dynamite. Tony Katz. Call 800-571-9422 <laughs> or 239-9393. This is Tony Katz tonight. You are go. The 70th anniversary of D-Day, the storming of Normandy via Utah, Omaha, Gino Gold Sword, June 6, 1944. Um, it has been a, a pleasure to watch social media talk about it at least, engage it. I only hope if you took, I, I hope you took the time, a few minutes with your own kids your own grandkids, with friends. Go out tonight. Raise, raise a glass to those who were there, to those who did it, who got the foothold in Europe that would take place. You know, those five beachheads, so, it, it, you know, the, storming the beaches in Normandy, but it was those five, we, we sectored them off. That the, the, So it's June 6th is D-Day, but they didn't link those beachheads together until June 12th. They didn't, weren't able to get that, that footing. But it was from there that they were able to get that hold in Europe and victory of the Allied forces would begin. That's, that's where it is. And you, you, I, I, have, I have yet to go. I, I will uh, it, go. It must be an amazing sight, those those cemeteries, those beaches, to to walk it, to see it, to even think that we could comprehend the experience of what it is they experienced. Uh, but I, I wanted to take a moment uh, to to read to you uh, General Dwight Eisenhower, who, of course, uh, on that day, not president, Supreme Allied Commander of Expeditionary Forces. And he wrote to those in his command. He he wanted to he he was willing them to fight and to victory. And he, if you've never heard it, I I don't know if you could find someone who could speak like this today or write like this today or be as honest and as uh, uplifting as this today. This is the order that General Eisenhower gave, June 6, 1944, from Supreme Headquarters Allied Expeditionary Forces. Soldiers, sailors, and airmen of the Allied Expeditionary Force, you are about to embark upon the Great Crusade, toward which we have striven these many months. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you. In company with our brave allies and brother-in-arms on the fronts, you will bring about the destruction of the German war machine, the elimination of Nazi tyranny over the oppressed peoples of Europe, and security for ourselves in a free world. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained, well-equipped, and battle-hardened. He will fight savagely. But this is the year 1944. Much has happened since the Nazi triumphs of 1940 and 41. The United Nations have inflicted upon the Germans great defeats in open battle, man to man. Our air offensive has seriously reduced their strength in the air and their capacity to wage war on the ground. Our home fronts have given us an overwhelming superiority in weapons and munitions of war and placed at our disposal great reserves of trained fighting men. The tide has turned. The free men of the world are marching together to victory. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less than full victory. Good luck, 
and let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. And with that, the United States, leading the Allied forces, sought to win and put an end to World War II. Put an end to the Nazis. Put an end to the fascists. The thing that I fear more than anything in this world is the lack of will that I see exhibited all around me. The lack of being able to look at a problem and say, we will defeat it because we will defeat it. Yes, we went about making sure that we had the proper weaponry. Yes, we made sure we had the properly trained men. But none of that matters. All of the weapons and all of the arms and all of the people matters not unless they're willing to run into the fire, to run at the bullet, to run at those who want to kill them. That's the will. That is the thing I fear losing every day. That is the thing that I see lost. That I see from these people who have sold out humanity for their ideology. That is the loss of will. I've often said that I'm not a fan of pinpoint warfare. I am not a fan of making sure we miss the schoolhouse or we miss the church. I believe that if, if, if we are going to go to war, we must completely and totally annihilate the enemy, not decimate, which is to just uh, destroy a certain percentage of. I mean annihilation. But that's a conversation of will. We shouldn't go to war for light or transient causes. But if we do, we should win. And I have been, never been more thankful that we were there in 1944. Thank you to those men. Thank you to all of you. We are back on Monday. Follow us at Tony Katz on Twitter. Until then, much love. Take care. The greatest American violinist active today. You talked about uh, the, the schools and the churches, and my Joshua mother's father Bell. was a B-17 Flying Fortress co-pilot, and they did most of their bombing runs over the city of Dresden. And they bombed everything, if you've ever seen pictures of yep. Dresden. Absolutely. And towards the end of his life, they went to Italy, and they had a layover in Berlin. And my grandfather was in the airport. He was in his mid-80s at this time. And he began to cry in the Berlin airport and started apologizing to all the people in the airport for what he had done because he had carried this guilt around for 65 years and was holding him up. Classical series tickets now at 317-639. Yes, Boston Randy. He did. He Hold on, I mean, hold on, hold on. You know, he was lucky to come home at all because he flew over 25 missions. You know, usually they let you go home, and he went over 25, so. Hold on. He was lucky to come home at all. Hold on, Ashley. The Indian uh, Symphony Orchestra. Guys, yes, so we were supposed to have three hours, but I thought I explained it earlier. Um, whatever the scheduling issue was at the station, they're running a thing about Reagan tonight, which was put together by Sports Mike, so it's actually rather good. Um, I was ready for three hours. I was ready for three hours, trust me. Uh, but we won't be three hours. That's the way it goes. Uh, but I'll tell you this, and by the way, thank you. Uh, the I, I That is the first time I've ever read anything like that. I, I don't usually do it. But it's that, that will conversation is... is read that. Here, I'll, I'll give it to you here. In case you don't have it, I'll put it in the chat room. Read that. It is just, it just, it jumps out at you that this is what's going to happen. There it is. This is how we're going to do it. So it's it's really good. And I, and, uh, I wanted to, to at least share it. Um, we have a very interesting week next week. Don't miss Thursday. Don't miss Thursday. I'm going to blow your mind. 
We'll catch you then, guys. Ashley, I'll be with you in two minutes. Take care. Don't miss Thursday.